So I studied uh, business and different parts of that with marketing, accounts, uh, economics, all this sort of stuff, which I really quite enjoyed certain aspects of that. But um, the reason I was kind of struggling at university at all times is the academic stuff I did struggle with. I joined the Student Association uh, my, in my second year and I was quite lazy. I didn't want to join a sports club because I didn't want to get up too early and I didn't really want to uh, you know, do a society because I couldn't think which society I wanted, even though it was like a hundred societies. So I joined the societies committee, so you kind of oversee all that sort of stuff. And that was interesting and fun, um, but for me it was, I still didn't feel like there was enough. But then I got wind that there was going to be a radio station, uh, or potential radio station, so I was like, right, I'm going to keep my foot in this door. Um, and it just it kind of coincided with my degree, because I was uh, going into do entrepreneurship as well. And part of that course was you had to make up a business uh, and run it for a year, hypothetically speaking. Um, but with me, I was like, well, the radio station, can I use this um, if I do the radio station? And, and then my lecturer said yes. So I managed to get all four of my friends who did the course with me. We all came as part of a group. And um, so we did that with the radio station. I just loved it. I just I knew I'd made the right choice coming to, to the university. I was five years old, this story, and um, people still get excited about it. I get stressed still thinking about it, I'll be honest. What happened was we decided we were going to create a soup company called the Hearty Soup Company. I developed loads of soup recipes. I watched a lot of River Cottage, whereas my business partner, Lara, she actually ran a wee cafe called Food Story. I was told that the company she worked for, this wee cafe, and it'd be shutting at the end of the month because uh, the owner uh, sadly had to, to go back to her family business. So Lara said, could we buy the business off you? And suddenly we had a premises potentially and a name. And we thought, the Hearty Soup Company is rubbish. Throw that away. All we'll do is we'll keep our core values because we're buying this new company called Food Story. Lara's cousin worked in London and he worked in fundraising and he said there's a new concept came over from America called crowdfunding where people give you money uh, as part of the crowd. Again, links back to community and crowd. And this community will give you money and you offer them freebies in return, cakes, coffee, whatever, once you're established. Um, so we weirdly built up a following with the crowdfund. Um, the local community started talking about, oh, what's this cafe going to be, blah, blah, blah. So when we opened our doors, People were already ready for us to kind of, you know, that food store is opening today, oh, fantastic. You know, so it really built up this kind of momentum for us. Um, and it's something that we've kind of maintained ever since, really. The, the community have always been quite kind and supportive to us. Um, and recently, to celebrate our five years, uh, we actually came back to the University of Aberdeen uh, to set up a cafe on campus uh, called Food Story Zero. We were one of the first cafes to be vegan, vegetarian in the city. Now you'll see this, this movement's really pushed forward in the last five years. So the next thing we thought, well, we, our environment is, is, a, is a core part of our core, core values. So why don't we focus on zero waste and zero packaging? And it's one thing that's been really exciting about um, uh, the University of Aberdeen. The university approached us and said, listen, we're thinking of reducing our zero packaging on campus. You're interested in setting up a zero waste cafe. So why don't you, I think they think, why don't you become our guinea pig um, and see if it works. So, so it's, it, it's, we're perfectly aligned with the university in the way it's thinking. We are creating a food story franchisee scheme, which is not what you think in the sense of it's not a franchise of food story. But what we do is we have certain staff that have certain skills and have shown passion to setting up their own business. What we want to do is then help them follow their dreams by setting up you know, a business with them. So we would be a shareholder in that business, but in actual fact, we would give them either momentum from Food Story or even some financial backing from Food Story. We want to give that kind of um, opportunity to our staff so that they can kind of have the same dream as we have. The ethos behind Food Story has always been about uh, the people, um, the, the kind of environment and the food. I think it takes me back to when I was at the university and you have that kind of community around you. We have a philosophy which we learned from a TED Talks, which is, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. Um, and we stand by that philosophy. My name is Sonny McKinnon, I am the co-owner at Food Story.